How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Uh, I'm excellent. I'm excellent. I appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. Of course. Nice to meet um, you. Um, is, let me see if I can get this pronunciation right. All right. Is it Cesar Caicedo? Exactly. Wow. Okay. Yes. Good deal. I looked up, I looked up both, I looked up your name. I want to see if I could get the pronunciation right. Uh, so I was looking it up online this morning. Yeah, the pronunciation is perfect. You know, my first language is Spanish, so, sorry. The R pronunciation at the end is at the end of the name is very strong. And then when you have two C's uh, in the same word, they both sound like C, like Kaise. Uh, the first one sounds like K, Kai, Se, Do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. All right. Well, Cesar, I appreciate you very much taking the time. Um, so I, you know, I asked Gray uh, if, if there was anybody within the, the craft hospitality group, um, you know, who, who is really good at what they do and loves what they do and has made hospitality a career and really enjoys hospitality. And he's, he said, you got to talk to Cesar. And uh, he's, he had some very nice things to say about you. So, you know, we are uh, doing a podcast series featuring conversations with people like you who, uh, you know, have chosen to make hospitality a career. I know you've been doing this for quite some time. Um, so I'd love to just get your story, you know, how, how you got started in hospitality and, um, you know, what you love about it. But but to kind of just to start this off, you know, uh, when did you first start working in, in hospitality or in restaurants? Um, well, like hospitality as a career to start for me um, when I moved to New York City from New Jersey uh, 18 years ago. Okay. I'm originally from Colombia. Okay. My first language is Spanish. I moved to United States for circumstances in life. I decided to start to learn in English because I have another career in Colombia and never been in the United States before. And on and on, I, am, I took the decision to stay. And then uh, New Jersey wasn't a little quiet for my taste. So I decided to move to United States to New York and um, like I, first of all, I feel attraction as a guest for fine dining restaurants, you know, like the decor, the ambience, the way. And uh, second one, I think that was the easiest spot to start because uh, obviously for me, without um, speaking fluent English, uh, there were some activities that was easy for me to work in getting to the restaurant. So I have an opportunity um, starting craft, being a polisher. Uh, they hired me to polish glassware and silverware. And at that time, I'm talking about 18 years ago that I started this adventure. Uh, craft was in the top of the list of restaurants in New York City. Like it was very new. It was just two years since they opened. Uh, they won the James Beard Award of the best new restaurant. Uh, Tom Colicchio wasn't a top chef yet, but he was one of the most successful chefs in the United States. So it was, a, it was a really good spot. I'm going to be honest with you, what attracted me from the many options that at the time was in New York, it was that they mentioned a, a word that it was a key for me to kind of decide to start there. It was that we are a company for people. We like to make people happy, employees and guests. So new from another country, not knowing nobody, scared obviously, not having an idea. That was something that clicked at the time and it still click right now. I've been 18 years in this company and this career. And uh, for you, obviously, being part of this, you know that this career is not easy, especially in a city like New York. 
So uh, yeah, that's how it started. And at the time that I was starting doing that, I was practicing with my coworkers, my English. And I was talking, I was allowed to make mistakes and my coworkers were like, some of them, are, oh, you don't pronounce it like that. What are you saying? I don't understand what you say. And it's this, the fear that you feel like you're shy, you don't talk. And some people were very nice. They're like, do you mind if I correct you? And on and on. And I'm still like, if um, let's say during this interview, there is things that you don't understand what I said, or I spoke so fast, or maybe I pronounced it in the wrong way. That's the way that it is, you know? So um, I start doing it and then they, when I could speak a little bit better, they put me as a bus boy in the main dining room. And then, I don't know, I had my own personality. I started talking with the guests and then I moved to food runner because I could understand chef and describe the food and, um, I'm very spiritual, so I'm kind of calm and yeah. I know how to control emotions. So kitchen can be a boiling uh, pot at sometimes during the rush hour. So I was calm. Let's do this, this that. And then I moved to from server. And then when I start feeling wine and passion about wine, I become in a captain. And then somehow I start liking weddings and parties and they put me in the private dining room and they like my style. I think Greg is one of them. Um, we are fan each other. I'm fan of him. He seems that he likes what I do. And that's been my progress in this company, what I call career. And uh, so many chances to keep going but I'm happy with what I'm doing. So I'm there for now. That was basically the story. Man, that is so cool, Cesar. I mean, what a great story coming to this country, not knowing the language. And, you know, I feel like um, somebody who's, you, that says so much for the company that you work for, that you've been with them for 18 years. Uh, particularly in the hospitality industry. I mean, so many people in this industry move, whether they move geographically or they just move from, you know, one restaurant to the other, or um, there's so much of that. And so to, to stick with one, one group for 18 years through all the ups and downs and changes, and you, you've learned from your peers, you've taught your peers there at work, and it just says a lot for the company you work for. So you know, you mentioned that they talked about being a company for people and that's what really got you interested in the beginning. And clearly, you know, there's, there's a lot of companies that say that, um, that sounds good, but to do that and to do that consistently for two decades and to have that as a foundation of, of your business, one of the foundational principles, which clearly it is, that says a lot for the company you work for. So, Tell me more about the people that you work with and you work for there and what, I mean, I'm sure you've probably had other opportunities to go do other things or, you know, work in other businesses, but here you are. So I, I just, I'm curious if you would tell more about what is special there and how do, do how does your company live up to that promise of the brand of, of really being there for people, particularly as it pertains to, you know, your team? Mm. Well, I remember, and by the way, it seems that it was just yesterday that sometimes I say 18 years and people say 18 years. And I ask myself sometimes and I say, am I in the comfort zone? And I say, no, I'm not because I still love to go. Like I love to go, I go on time. I like the whole process of being part of it. So many different changes of all this adventure of pandemic. There was really a struggle for them, for us. And uh, <clears throat> I think that this is a good marriage between craft, hospitality and myself, because even in the bad times and the good times, like a marriage, I think we've both been there. 
Yeah. It's easy, but I put it in that way because I saw how they were with us during the pandemic time. We obviously here in New York City, March 15, 2020, bye, layoff. That's what it is. That's the American system. You go home, you start applying for unemployment, on and on. And it was challenging because here in New York, there was the system collapse. It was difficult, yeah. but the company stayed there. Like the chief of operation at the time, Justin Morel, the human resources, we, they stayed there. We, they were email, email, emailing us constantly. Like we are here. We don't know what is happening. This is happening. Go there, do that. If you don't know it, um, even this, the message was sent in Spanish and in English, like for people who at this moment are not really good in English or don't understand 100% the language, you know that New York City is a city full of a huge population is Latin American. So that part of like um, taking care in some way and at least trying to be there it's still 18 years after there. Um, I think that obviously I'm not going to be um, shy on this. I think that my personal effort, it has to be a lot, like my uh, interest to become somebody, to do something, to fit in this new country and this culture. It's a big percentage of what is happening in my life right now. Another big percentage is the way that I was raised. My mom and my house is a hospitality house. We Colombians, we are passionate people. We have passion for what we do and what we feel. So my house is the most amazing restaurant in the world for me and the people that I know. And my mom is the greatest host. So all those skills mixing where my mom taught me, what I saw in my table when I was a kid, my mom acting with the guests, coming to this company and people taking care of us. They didn't mind it that I was like, I remember being a polisher. One day I said, oh, I would love to be a captain here in this restaurant one day. And this person came and said, oh, that will never happen. Hmm. And I was like, oh, interesting, why? He said, um, your accent, probably he said the way you look. And I was like, hmm. So maybe that was, who knows, a little fire that I was put under my ass. And I said, oh, really? <laughs> Let's see. And yeah. then um, I've been here and I'm still there, you know? And um, um, it becomes a passion. So it's passion. So is their passion for three people? Is his passion for food? I'm gonna tell you that I saw Mr. Colicchio, Chef Colicchio himself putting the new China on the tables two days ago. We are celebrating 20 years. They decide to go with a new China, new, new chargers, new place for the table. And I see the man that let's be honest, is a celebrity. His life is in, in taking care of his baby and going there and what are the plates going? So that's something that you say, okay, let's keep going. Or over there, you hold the door for one of the corporate people that say, thank you, Caesar. And da, da, da. they ask him, how is your baby? My coworker just had a baby. So everybody's like, what's the baby? The, I, we have a guy who lo loves to decorate and flowers and he is doing the flowers in the restaurant now. So we work hard, it's business, let's be honest, it's money, it's business, it's New York City, very high demanding. But then it's this part when the managers, they don't yell, they don't diminish you, you don't go to the kitchen that I know as a fact because I have a lot of co-workers that are my friends and in other places and, and then chefs yell because they are nervous they have a lot of responsibility so you become very unhuman I will say so we that's not our case you know like I'm allowed like if I have a guest that is being I notice it that is being mean or is being too much I have the um, tool to go and tell them and tell the manager, listen, 
That's why I, I feel some kind of weird energy between the guests in position three, table 108, a number, nothing personal. I'm just letting you know in case of things go bigger and then they go, they have a conversation. Sometimes it's a stress guest. Sometimes it's a guest who wants to speak with a suit and they don't want to speak with a regular waiter, which is fine. So that's part of what I call a career because I understand people. For me, um, like see that people share stories uh, people, sometimes people is sad or they are upset. Who knows what situation they had before they arrived to the restaurant and then they left happy. And then, so it, it's something that I like and it's something that goes with the promise that the restaurant said, we make people happy and it's employees and guests. Mm -hmm. And as I heard, the farmers are happy, the people, the wine people are happy, like the providers, you know? Yes. So the whole thing is an energy. And yeah, I have an opportunity in places, different places, and they call me here and there. And sometimes money is good, but then it's when your personal choice, when you said, I left my family one time in left in Colombia. And I make that transition of why if I'm happy right now and I'm growing and I have an opportunity to keep going because I, I'm being offered to be a manager. And I just decide this is not the path that I want to follow because I'm a people's person. I don't like computers, office, schedule, all that kind of thing. Yeah. So in that kind of career focus on the employee, I see myself as a salesman because I like sales. Yeah. So I sell the product, I sell the experience, I sell the feeling of that person wanting to come back. They're coming to celebrate. I've been 18 years dead and the other day I have this guy saying, oh, I used to come here with my grandma. And it was funny because inside I was like, okay, so are you calling me old? But I was just joking, but it's true. He was a young person and 18 years after, I had people that I, I have a couple that they get engaged in the restaurant and now they are coming with their kids. So, and it become a family and, gener and I tell you, so it goes by waves. Yeah. But people is the main, people, food, hospitality, it's kind of like the main ingredient. Yeah. If we keep the same words related with food, you know? Sure, sure. Well, you are, you are a salesman. I mean, you, you, you're the best representative for your brand man that I, I think I've come across in, in all these years of doing this I mean you love what you do you love the people you work with you love your customers I can see it as you said you're Colombian you're passionate but you know it's a uh, it's wonderful to see somebody who cares that much about their career and you clearly have you left a country you came here you started with you know with I mean no no family no friends didn't know the um the language. So what a success story, Cesar. And uh, uh, you built a great family here of, of you know, colleagues and customers. And um, it's so refreshing. And so uh, it's intoxicating to, to see uh, somebody like you who loves what they do so much. And you just wish for more people to find that kind of joy in their career because um, that, that makes life a lot more fun, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, but in the same sense, you see a lot of people in this business that they hurt themselves mm. and they hurt the companies. Like uh, we see this as an easy money maker. Mm. It's not an easy money maker. So you see the tips and sometimes it's good, but it's easy to be away from your family during the important dates like Christmas, Thanksgiving, because you're working. Right. 
It's easy to work in the night when everybody have a regular schedules in the mornings and you are missing the beautiful sunny day. There is a lot of things. There is a lot of problems in this as different countries have, but like, what about the mental health? There is a lot of things that, there is a lot of things that you get from the guests, a lot of energy, a lot of like um, anger. Some guests are super nice, but there's a lot of guests and you have to absorb all the information. Mm -hmm. It drains a lot from you. So it's the same. If you are going to be an engineer, you have to love it. You have to decide to go in that way. Then you have to enjoy it. If you decide to be a priest, you have to enjoy that. And you see the perks and the bats and the goods and then make it with you. So if they call you, so then I see so many coworkers there. They, they, the restaurant open the doors and the first person arrive, they never see them before. And I say, oh, I hate that person. I say, what do you mean you hate it? Why? Is that you you know and I don't know, but it's the way they look. Mm. They understand what I yeah. said. Wow. So it's a perspective. So I always tell them, like, do you understand that that person is bringing your salary? Is bringing your money because we make tips. So the guests are bringing the money to make your salary. So that guests that you're hating are your shoes, your trips, your drinks, the things that you pay for. So it's just going to be three men, three hours, two hours, two hours and a half. A nice interchange of energy. So let's make it a nicer. It's not painful for the guests. It's not painful for you. Yes. And everybody happy in that. So, but you need you need to make clear about it. And I think sometimes with the hiding, I think that. Uh, in the hiding, there is a lot of people who come in just because they think that it's easy and it's going to be fast. And I don't think so that is easy. I don't think so that is. And maybe, yeah, you are not flying a airplane or you are not building in a skyscraper, but you are dealing with people. And that hour by hour and day by day can be a lot. Oh, it, well, I agree. It, it's, that's it. I admire folks like you for what you do. I think it's extremely challenging and you have to, the skill sets you develop <clears throat> working in a restaurant, particularly if you're dealing with guests or, you know, they're transferable to, to anything. Um, it's an amazing balance of skills you have to have with dealing with so much, everything's compacted into this short period of time. There's a huge rush of people, lots going on, a lot of people, a lot of needs, a lot of different types of energy. Energy at one table is different from the energy at the next. And you got to, you got to balance all that. So it's an amazing thing. Um, you know, the, um, the, you, you touched on this mental health, you know, it's, it's, it's something that the industry has had a tough time with for a long time. I feel like there's, there's more conversation about that now and learning, you know, about self-care and, and taking care of yourself outside of work. So how do you, you know, how do you take that energy and deploy it when you're outside of work? How do you make sure that you're getting what you need for your mental health? Because I mean, 18 years of doing it, that's a physical strain. It's a mental strain, but, but here you are. And, you've got the passion of somebody that just, you know, has been at it for a year. So what do you do to, to, to provide for yourself? Uh, that's easy to answer. Only one word. I meditate. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the meaning of meditation is quiet your mind. So mm -hmm. that's my experience. So uh, now all these years after, I can tell that that's the key um the key the when um i go there i'm very professional in the way that i learn my menu mm -hmm. knowledge is power i know my wines i know my drinks i know so when you know it's it's, it's a sales uh skill that's why i say i'm selling i'm a salesman so when you want to sell something if you are selling advertising, you're selling um, uh, makeup or whatever you're selling wine, you need to know the product. So then you guess 
knows or your customer that you are knowledgeable, then you know and they trust you. So when they trust you at the beginning, it's like a flight. It can be sometimes a bumpy fly, but as soon as you get there, it goes well. So when you get a guest, you read the guest, you see where some things that he wants, maybe he wants this, that, but if you are trying to give him the most expensive dish or the most expensive wine, when you know that it's a person that is maybe saving for a year to come to this kind of restaurants and what they're looking is just like the picture for Instagram and anything, you give them the classics, you treat them well, you understand that part, and then you move in that direction. So first of all, being professional, and second one for me, meditating, I don't take it personal. Of course, I'm human. So when they come in, I sit in this way, we are going to be together for two hours. You are going to leave your money for me, right? So let's make an agreement. It's not that I spoke this with my guests. I do it at personal. So let's start. And sometimes I get a response. Sometimes I say, hi, ah, welcome to craft. Thank you for choosing us because they are choosing craft under 13,000 restaurants in New York mm -hmm. City. And right. they decide to come to this one. So be thankful, come here. I explain the menu, I let them know what are they going to do. They are going to have a nice experience. I'm here to guide you to the experience. I'm not the, the perfect person who knows more than you. Yeah, you wanna leave the thing, let me help you with this. But then I always think that I'm inside a bubble. That's my meditation. I put myself in a bubble. And no matter what is coming from there, it's going to stop there. Like, can you imagine how many jokes I, I get about Pablo Escobar in Colombia and the whole <laughs> Netflix situation? And then I have coworkers, uh, uh, people from Colombia that they get very offended. Like, it's like, just make fun of it. Like the other day, hi, where, are, where, where is that accent from? Some people can get offended for that. Come on, you are in New York City, 2022 one of the biggest cities in the world and you still get offended because yes i have an accent and i am proud of my exotic accent so then i make it a joke it's an opportunity where do you think am i from i'm going to give you three guests if you guess champagne on me if you don't <laughs> extra hundred dollars in the tip <laughs> that table is mine or oh i'm watching this uh, uh, Pablo Escobar, and he's with a partner, the wife or whatever, I said, you let him watch too much TV. Stop watching Netflix. Listen, Colombia is more what the Netflix says. Go to JFK and take a JetBlue flight to Cartagena, Colombia, and go and experience Colombia in a different way. So you become in, yeah. in some kind of relation, like uh, every business, every career, you know? Yeah. Uh, you, you have a great um, <clears throat> mindset, my friend, and a great way of looking at things. And that's such an important, you know, this is an, it's a very valuable uh, tool that you have that enables you to take a situation that, you know, you can choose how you want to respond. You can choose how you want to react. You clearly choose to take something and turn it into something positive because you've got a big picture mindset of, the guest comes in here, if the guest is happy, the guest uh, enjoys the experience, no matter what kind of mood they came in here with, if I'm able to turn it around in some way over that two hours, the guest leaves happy, they, they'll come back, they'll pay, you know, a gladly a, a good tip, which benefits you, they'll return to the restaurant, which benefits the restaurant, there's just, it's a big picture way of looking at things. Yes, I agree with you. I have a, I struggle sometimes with why people get offended very easily these days. And I think it's unfortunate because, you know, you, you can always turn any of those types of comments and things into an opportunity. But most importantly, I think that you are, you are a wonderful spokesman just for hospitality, period, my friend. I, I really believe that. I, I hope that um, a lot of people, you know, we put this on our podcast. I'll put the video up on YouTube but most of our audience is on the podcast. Um, 
But there are lots of people that listen to that. And I, I'm really glad to have the opportunity to speak to you because, uh, you know, it's been a tough 18 months for your industry. Uh, your industry has responded uh, in such an amazing way, has dealt, you know, has been just dealt blow after blow after blow, particularly in New York City. And yet here you are, and here's Kraft, and uh, you should be proud of, of what y'all have accomplished in the last 18 months under the most uh, horrific circumstances. And, and here you are, still at it 18 years in with such a positive attitude and such a great way of looking at things. So I really do thank you for taking the time to do this. And I hope that a lot of people will listen to this. I would imagine that, you know, uh, Greg and everybody there at Kraft will want all of the uh, fellow employees to see this man, because this is just like a, I mean, this is just, you just gave like a class on like how to approach hospitality. I'm serious, man. Like, I mean, if you wanted to like take somebody who's new at hospitality, I'd say, well, just watch him talk for, you know, 30 minutes. Watch this. Cause you went through so many of the aspects of, of what you do. Uh, and it's just really fun to, to listen to that and really inspiring, man. So I appreciate it very much. Glad, I'm glad that it worked for you. It, it really worked easy for me. Very nice way to start my morning. And I'm glad that you are wearing the schedule fly hat. I was <laughs> going to wear the craft one that I have. It is the one that the cooks uh, wear. I love to wear it because those people work so hard and it yeah. should be proud to wear the hat. Uh, no, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity, you know? It was nice. It's like I have a party that I bet feels the same passion that I do. Yeah. I still remember how much I struggled when we changed from a schedule in the wall to a schedule fly. Yeah. You know, technology is not my best friend. Yeah. So I was like to the manager, oh, give me my schedule and print it out, please. And say, no, you have to go there. And I was like, okay. And now how great tool it is, you know? Yeah, it's yeah. super easy. It's amazing. So yeah, it's been growing. The business is growing and we are going to get there for New York. I think that pandemic, if you see it from the nice point of view, pandemic for the hospitality and restaurant business was like a drainer because there is a lot of people that is not coming back. There is a lot of people that hates restaurant business. There is a lot of articles. Oh, finally, I left hospitality. Well, so now I think that people who really feel passion, people who wants to do it, and the restaurants who were strong yeah. to manage the wave and surfing. So I think that we are going to get there. And uh, I agree. as the guest is easy as well for them, if there is guest or you as a guest, watch this or have a conversation. You are a server, but you are a guest as well when you go to a restaurant. Sure. So, for example, I was yesterday to a place to have a glass of wine and appetizer, and I saw how the lady, the waitress, was like running and making her best effort to cover like 12 tables in a party outside, and the table next to me, they were just nasty with that girl. Mm -hmm. They were like, what are you taking so much time? And inside of me, I was like, you don't read news, but you are, you're a foodie, you're a money person with money you I, I bet you get the 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 newspaper and your door every morning and you are you know like supposed to be super educated people and do you know that the restaurant business is 50 percent capacity of employees cooks and everything so you have to mold yourself as a guest to those yeah. things as well so know about food is not only to know how the meat is cooked, is prepared, yeah, all the wine tastes so good. Be a nice guest, be on time, get the reservation on time. Don't go 30 minutes after because that moved the whole city and make Metro ID and everybody crazy. Yeah. You know, read the menu, stop your phone, decide what you want to eat, it's out, and don't call and say, ah, oh, we are ready. And then you go to a table and say, I don't know what to eat, what do you decide? You know, like it's yeah. a mutual experience. So sure. you, you you don't want to eat 10 items from the menu. You know, when you go to a restaurant, it's going to be your chicken, maybe a fish. 
have your options, two, three things. No, you know, if you want the, the whole menu to be described, yes, I can describe it, but you have three more guests next to you that they don't feel the same like you. So it is, I think it's a very interesting exercise of community and respecting other people's opinion and including your server. And I go away, I go with this, be nice with your server. <laughs> be nice to yourself. I completely agree with that. There's a lot of folks right now working super hard to try to make it, you know, just as enjoyable as it was prior to the pandemic when there was a full staff and, you know, uh, it's, it's tough right now. So, well, we're, we're hoping that, you know, people will, more and more people will, will consider hospitality as a career. It, it is a great career. And I got to tell you, my friend, you have set a very high precedent uh, oh. for this, for this podcast, for this series about hospitality as a career, because, uh, it, it, you know, this, you, you are, it, you'll be tough to follow. <laughs> you really will. You, you really articulate your passion for this. Well, and I, I will let you go, but I appreciate your time. Appreciate your, your positive energy. And I know everybody that works with you and all your guests appreciate that too, my friends. So thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Very, very humble here. Anytime you need anything, just let me know. Okay. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure. All right. See you, man. Take care.